In one of my Fusion 360 online weekly classes, one of my students brought up this model from the very talented Sven with Clockspring 3D. It's basically a box, but instead of using friction fit or a snap fit mechanism, it uses a horizontal thread to lock the box. I was asked to do a tutorial on how I would go about designing this model. Now, Sven does have a video showing his approach, and I'll link his video below, along with a link to his My Mini Factory site with all his designs. I definitely recommend checking out his work. In this video, I'll go through a brief walkthrough of my timeline and show how I approached this design. If you want the full step-by-step -step tutorial where you can follow me as we design this, then check out my Patreon page where I include the full design tutorial to this and my other projects along with the Fusion 360 file for download. Here's the Fusion 360 model, and as you can see, this is modeled in uh, three separate parts. We've got our bottom section here, and then our top, and the top simply slides right onto the bottom. So if you, you see here, if I just take this, move it up, uh, slides right down, and I've got a 0.3 millimeter clearance there, which I'll show you in a second. And then I've got a threaded nut here on the front. Um, so the approach I took here is a little bit different than Sven's uh, model because he does um, the threaded nut on both sides. I found that it, that wasn't really necessary. This was good enough to hold the box in place. And so instead of doing a, another thread on the back here, I simply uh, mirrored this portion here of the uh, this little bump out so that you can actually just be able to grab it and pull the box down. So that was the approach I decided to take. Now, of course, if you're someone who loves symmetry and that's important to you, then yeah, go ahead and recreate the thread on the other side as well. Okay, I'll go through my timeline here. I'm just gonna drag it all the way back to the beginning and just do a quick walk through, uh, through my design approach that I took here. So the first thing I did was create a sketch and you can see here, this is a uh, center rectangle. Uh, that I created right on the origin. And the important thing here to know is that I did an offset of 0.3 millimeters and that becomes my clearance uh, for the fit. I simply created two rectangles, well, one rectangle and then an offset. And then I extruded that rectangle and then applied a fillet and then came in with the shell. Now, the important thing here is I did an inside shell of two millimeters and uh, I'll show you uh, in a second why, because this is sort of a, a different approach to just creating these fit boxes. So, and then I created, let's see, I've got a sketch here, which I used to create that bump out, and there it goes, and then I mirrored it to the other side. So that's that, and then I created the top body, and then for this body, what I did is, going back to that sketch, I basically now I extruded both profiles. So the first profile, um, or the first extrusion for the bottom was just to extrude the inside profile. The To create the top, I extruded both profiles, including that little clearance section. Then I filleted and then shell. So the same thing. The difference here is with the shell, I did an outside shell. So it's adding material to the outside of the body. And then that way, you know, that ends up leaving me with that clearance fit already sort of in place right there, that point three millimeters. That was the basic approach. Draw the rectangle, extrude both sides, the one as an inside and one as an outside shell. And that worked out. Uh, let's see. And then the next thing I did here, I just brought, used the line tool to bring the top part down here. I mean, I got this flipped. And then I did a Boolean operation here next. So this is going to be a just a combined cut here to cut out the section here, that little bump out to leave me with the top portion with the cutouts right there. And then the next part is really important because that's the offset here to give me the clearance. So I did a here an offset face and that just basically, let me see if I bring this back. If you take a look, you'll see that these will bump out just a little bit and that's that 0.3 millimeter clearance that I included in there so that this would actually fit. All right, and then uh, another sketch here, let's take a look at what that is. So this is the circle I made to create the threads. The approach I did there was just uh, extrude a cylinder, uh, apply the thread in here. You wanna make sure that you have model checked and I went with the courses thread designation it gave me, which is this M18 by two and a half. 
And, and then this technique here, this actually, um, Sven uses this same technique and um, I thought it was actually pretty helpful in creating uh, this thread here to print horizontally. And um, basically you scale, let me remove the top portion here. So just basically involved, you take this thread and you scale it. Uh, but you do a non-uniform scale and you, you're basically scaling it out this way which kind of stretches the thread making them coarser allowing them to better print and actually work in this orientation so I thought that was a, a neat technique there all right and then uh, I simply align that into place here and let's see and then so the next part I wanted to do here was uh, create a chamfer right because of this overhang here and we don't want to have to deal with supports when we're working with threads so what I did was uh, create a sketch and apply a chamfer there through the sketch and the way that worked as you can see I created this triangle here and when I did the extrusion there I just took that triangle and extruded it all the way through but instead of doing a cut I did an intersect and that way it just kept the part of the profile that overlapped that the thread there so that left me with exactly what I wanted which is this shape here now I applied that same principle to the top so if I move this you can see I drew another triangle here on the top and then extruded that through um, using an intersect and the way that worked that basically just left me with uh, this chamfered edge here that makes it um, a lot easier to to be able to thread this. So that's the approach I took there. And then my next part here is I use the split body to split the thread in half. So let's, let me show that. I just used this surface here to split this, uh, the thread in half. And now I have this here with two bodies. And then I went ahead and combined them to each section of the top and the bottom part of the box. To do the uh, the actual nut, the approach I, I did there is I extruded that same circle, uh, went ahead and shelled it and did an outside shell and then applied threads to the inside. So same thread profile. And then I went ahead and uh, scaled that. Uh, again, same idea, uh, non-uniform, one direction. And then let's see. Oh, and then I did the circle here and then applied a circular pattern. I um, actually extruded this first. And then once I got that one uh, cut out there, I filleted it and then applied a circular pattern to give me the rest of that pattern there. And then it all came together to create this uh, really neat design. There's something so satisfying about this box. I gotta tell you, just sliding it together and locking it in place. So that was my approach I took here in designing it. If you want the full step-by-step -step tutorial and wanna follow along with me as I create this model, uh, check out my Patreon page where I will have that as well as uh, the Fusion 360 model here that you can download and play with the design. All right, guys, that's my approach to creating this design. I did this for my weekly online class as a request of one of the students. If you're interested in joining that class, I'll leave a link below where you can find out more information. And if you're just looking to get started with Fusion 360, uh, check out my quick start guide. I've got a link below to that as well. All right, I'll be back in a few with a new project.